Hello, Facebook worlds. Good morning. We're going to be going live on Instagram. And we are live on Instagram oh, right now. Are. Hello, hello, Instagram world. Hello and welcome to Window Treatment Friday Live. Today is episode number 117. And mm. the topic today is specialty drapery hardware. And today we are talking about elbows, curved poles, and bent rods. And in just a second, I'm going to be joined by my friend and colleague, Kimberly Seraphim from Window Works. And if this is your first time joining us today, please know that we are here every single Friday <laughs> at 9 a.m. ish or so talking about window treatments, geeking out on all things window treatments. All right. Okay. We're going to be going live. All right, we just are waiting for Vita to join, but as everyone is coming in, welcome. Happy Friday. We all survived another week. And if you're just joining us, today is episode number 117. We're going to be uh, diving into specialty drapery hardware and we're going to be focusing on elbows curved poles and bent rods hmm. so kim specialty hardware or hardware in general i should say that's your jam it's my love so, <laughs> here's my love. our res resident hardware geek over here <laughs> i said in the most loving kind of way <laughs> oh, hello I, my I, friend I, good morning i take it i take it i, I embrace I, it this I, is your thing I love drapery hardware. I don't know. It's weird. I got into it when I first started working at Window Works 14 years ago. And when Luann noticed that I had such a high interest in drapery hardware, anything that was kind of weird or out of the box, she was like, it's all you, kid. You're, you're <laughs> dealing with it. So. <laughs> it's all you, kid. That's funny. <laughs> so anytime, um, yeah, anytime a designer says, I want this, I'm like, okay, let's, let's find it. So, okay, I'm just straightening it out here because it's right. I feel like it's a little crooked. I don't know. Is this a little better? Not yeah, really. That's is, good. It, is it better? Okay. All right. Okay. So let's let's get right into. Well, no. Before we get right into it, let's talk about how this whole series started. Again, if yes. you guys are new here, if you don't know what Window Treatment Friday Live is, it started on a podcast. So Kim, tell us how did it start? So it started with Vita and Luann. They would speak about once a month or bi-monthly on the business side of uh, window treatments, and they lovingly called the episode Window Treatment Friday or AKA WTF. And <laughs> during the uh, pandemic, Vita and I were brainstorming on different ways that we could just kind of get in front of um, our colleagues and connect with other um, people in the industry. So we thought, you know what, what if we brought Window Treatment Friday um, and did like a live series so everyone can enjoy and see uh, photographs and actually see different works, see our successes, our uh, mistakes, and um, any way that we could help anyone and, and educate you all on the topic of window treatments. And that's kind of how it started two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. I know this is episode number 117. We've been at it for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. We have a very extensive library of these various topics. We take apart and then put back together things like pleats and drapery panels, valances, hardware, woven wood shades, valances, cornices, shutters, linings. Who would have thought that we could have talked about linings for 45 40 minutes? minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, but we did. But before we delve into this topic today, I just want to tell you real quick about another resource that you in the window treatment industry have. If you are a window treatment professional, shop at home pro, an installer or workroom, there is another podcast that Miss Luann started because one wasn't enough. Nope. And it wasn't because that one was targeted to interior designers. This particular one, the new one, is called Window Treatments for Profit. It is a new podcast that Luann Nagaris started about about half a year ago and on it yours truly has a uh, what do I call it a recurring recurring guest, guest spot recurring yeah. guest spot I, mm -hmm. I need to like practice it better because <laughs> I'm almost like what am I again <laughs> I am reoccurring guest host every Thursday morning I am queued up tuned in into your 
podcast app, wherever you listen to your podcast, I come to you with a series that I call Vita's Tip in 10. It is a small but oh so mighty tip that I give you to propel your business forward. And uh, today, just this morning at 5 a.m., I recorded two new episodes that will be airing towards the end of October, beginning of November. So um, you can listen to this podcast. There's three episodes dropping per week, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. My particular series is on Thursday morning. So I invite you to join me, listen to the 10 minutes real quick. It's like a uh, shot of espresso (laughs) and uh, you're you're on with your day. Feed us tip in 10. I can't wait to hear what you think. Perfect. All All right, right. let's without further ado. So what we wanted to talk about today um, is basically like specialty drapery hardware. And it oftentimes it comes up when you have these kind of funky windows and you just don't know how to dress them. And um, oftentimes I will, when I'm working with designers or retail clients and we have a bay window or just an odd type of application of a, of a drapery rod, their first gut instinct is, I really want to drape, but we can't do it because of this. And I'm like, no, there's brackets that I can use. There's elbows that I can use. And, mm-hmm. you know, drapery hardware has come a very long way because these kind of swivel brackets um, or swivel elbows rather, uh, really just came onto the market, I want to say maybe in the last decade or so, because mm-hmm. When you had a bay window situation, oftentimes you would just butt the the rods the up. The two rods together, and there was together, a gap, and, and it looked was horrible, was unfinished. It looked, yes, it looked very unfinished looking. So, um, And then they had the um, more of a stationary elbow. So, like, that was like that. We we're like, okay, that will work. But sometimes because of the angle, um, you know, Billy would always figure out a way to make it work. But then when they came out with the adjustable elbow, that was like a super game changer because you could really tailor the rod to the corner or wherever you're installing the hardware. Because as you know, if you're in the window treatment um, industry, no, you know, no two windows are identical or the same. So especially when you're talking about angles or on a bay or whatnot, the angle, although to the eye can look identical, but it could just be off by a couple of degrees. So that's mm-hmm. why the adjustable um, elbow is a real big game changer. And as you know, I come on here and I talk a lot about one of my favorite drapery hardware vendors, which is Hauser Brothers. And they do have an adjustable elbow that <clears throat> we have used many, many times. I don't really use the um, more stationary elbow. Yeah, it's, because the adjustable it just it it it's essentially what it says. It can yeah, adjust. adjust. <laughs> it's not stationary. It's not just like set it and forget it. Yeah. And if your corner is a little weird, and not only not no two windows are alike, but no two corners within right. the same windows are alike. And this adjustable elbow that you're seeing, um, essentially the two ends they can this swivel box. back and forth like this. Yeah. So if your corner is sixty degrees, thirty degrees, ninety degrees, it can it can work that magic or any anything in between 37 44 <laughs> yeah you could really manipulate it to fit and it, it is uh, it's definitely a very custom um fit and a very custom look That's so right. this and this project that we did them. here <laughs> this was a tricky project that we did for blanche garcia um so her client here had the ever so popular especially if you're in the livingston area <clears throat> angled ceilings in the mm. primary bedroom <laughs> so <laughs> uh what was really cool here was that she brought the wallpaper all the way up to mm-hmm. um un- brought it up on the angle and painted mm-hmm. the ceiling a really deep dark color but when it came to the drapes the clients were really adamant about having um blackout and mm-hmm. um although the window what you're seeing here <clears throat> the window wasn't that big of a window but if we were to put the drape just on the sides, you're going to get light bleed, you're going to get light bleed that comes over the top. So Mm -hmm. we came up with this. um, Now what we did here were decorative um, traversing tracks. So Mm -hmm. you can see them. um, And we did it with a ceiling clip. So it's a flat clip that gets a flat bracket that gets mounted to the ceiling and the rod gets clicked into it. So there is no gap between the top of the ceiling and the, t- or the, or the ceiling and the top of the rod. And so um, this was the, br- the first, this is the first time we ever actually did something like this. So um, 
And then what we had to do was use the elbows to really get that curve. Mm -hmm. So, and, but the center rod there, what you're seeing, the drape actually traverses there. The drapes on the side do not traverse. They're more of like a stationary application because they are on the angle. It was mm -hmm. more for the look because the client wanted that like cozy hotel, wall to wall mm -hmm. drapery. Mm -hmm. Um type of look uh and so this is how we were able to achieve that oh my kim i have so many questions <laughs> <laughs> i'll try to contain myself okay so um it, the top rod is a traverse rod so it's not a rod and rings did i get no, that right that the, the whole thing is traverse the whole, the whole thing, whole is, thing traverse. is traverse uh -huh. the whole thing the whole thing is traverse so um the bracket the wall mounted bracket that creates no gap between the rod and the ceiling. What it's is actually that? not a wall. I, it's not wall mounted, it's ceiling mounted. So I, everything I, I meant ceiling mounted so, bracket, but there's no gap between the ceiling and, and the rod. So it, it looks Even like, like a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. It's what happens is because where if you're looking at a decorative traversing rod, you have like the track on the bottom where the carriers yeah. go in, and then you yeah. have the track on the top where the bracket clicks into. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like an eighth of an inch, Okay, but it's okay. so flush. Right. I'm, be, I'm, I'm being it's, super minute here. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like, because again, back in the day, we weren't given with the decorative hardware, we weren't mm -hmm. given that small flush option. It was always like that drop down bracket with that stem and the stem was about an inch and you had the plate yeah. and it was ugly. And it's like, who yeah. wants to do that? So yeah. when they came out with this type of bracket, it uh -huh. really was a game changer. Now, when you're dealing with elbows, mo the most important thing to think about is there's an elbow that fits a decorative traverse rod and mm -hmm. then an elbow, different type of elbow that fits your just standard hollow metal pole. So mm -hmm. no two elbows are the same because the connections are different. So learn that the hard way once where you ordered the wrong elbow and Billy goes and to put it up fit. and it mm -hmm. didn't fit. So mm -hmm. especially when we were new to elbows. So you have to kind mm -hmm. of keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. It's no different than certain brackets. You could use certain brackets with certain types of rods and so That's on right. and so forth. It's the same thing with elbows. So that you have to just make sure that it is an elbow for a decorative traversing rod, which is what we used here. Because okay. if we wanted to do a rod with rings, but then how to use a traversing rod on the side, it wouldn't have worked. That's right. And they, because there's, there's no elbow that can house a traversing rod on one side and a regular mm -hmm. rod on the other side. There is no elbow that has two different connections. The right. elbow has the same connection. So, so it has to be the same uniform rod on both sides. Right. And then not only that, then you would have the angled panels on the sides closer to the rod and then the actual functioning panels that then drop down between and you have that space between the the ring and the top of the drape so mm -hmm. for this since blackout was very um important um we decided to go with the traversing system again because also when you're dealing with angles mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's the best way to go because you're able to really get the drape in place on an angled rod with a traversing rod and so this is a picture of um what the drape looks like opened and then we have a picture of what it looks like closed so mm -hmm. you can really see here you get that really cozy look mm -hmm. and um the customer was super happy with the way that this turned out it was one of the first times we ever did something like this and we're like you know what we're just going to try it we're going to see yeah it's quite a feat, yeah. right and <laughs> so, okay how did you make the two side rods how did you make those pleats um stationary well, how, how did uh, they not move? Did you put a little set screw inside the rod? So uh, when you're dealing with um, traversing rods, they have these things called locks. So we just put a lock after every um, carrier. Oh, where yeah, so then that way every day. Locks. So then that way it, it doesn't move. Yeah, Billy um, likes to, when especially when we're doing decorative, um, actual operable functional panels. If I don't order locks, I get in big trouble. I get yelled at. So I order, oh, I always order extra. So he even has some for his little, you know, backup, um, bins, yep. his backup bins. But he, it's just, uh, he puts in a lock because in that way, and then also there's different locks 
There's a lock for ripple fold. There's a different lock for pinch pleat. I have never ordered a, a traverse traversing rod lock in oh, the yeah. 17 years I've been doing business. No, we, we you guys, you learn something new every yeah, single day. It just he likes it because it gives it stability. And then especially if it's a stationary panel where the client's like, I don't want people to have the ability to move it. Right. So I just want you to dress it and do your thing. We actually have our stationary panels here locked. And when uh -huh. I go to see people like move our drapes, I'm like, ah, oh, please don't. They're not going to yeah. move. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now, just just a little hack. If for some reason you forgot to get the locks, or in my case, you didn't yeah. even know there was, there was such a thing, your installer can put a little set screw behind mm -hmm. the, the last carrier, and it yeah. just won't move anywhere. Yeah. But there's so, an actual, like, it clicks There's an in, actual thing that works There's for an it. actual thing. They're not expensive. So it's yeah. just... I'm it's sure. become part of like my ordering thing. Like I have like a yep. a checklist. Like a okay. Checklist. Yeah. Did I order okay. batons? Did I order uh -huh. locks? So. Uh huh. Okay. My next question is this: Did uh -huh. you guys install the hardware first, yes. and then you figured out the lengths for the um, mm -hmm. angle drapes? How did you figure? Yeah. How did you figure out the length? <laughs> the length. Um. Well, we took very detailed measurements, and then once we knew what the hardware was, then between Billy and myself, we were able to take the. Drape the reduction. Deduction. Yeah. We always have like when especially when we have to cut rods and pieces like that. So we always have like leftover pieces of hardware that if we yeah. have to take it out and kind of build like mini versions of it, mm -hmm. we can do it here in the showroom. But mm -hmm. for the most part, um, this was a rod, it's a rod we use all the time. So we know the dimensions and it was just a matter of okay, we're doing a flush mount mm -hmm. bracket. It the pole is an inch and an eighth. Mm -hmm. We're doing pinch pleat carrier. Let's mm -hmm. figure out what it is. And then he, yeah. um, he'll sit there. He'll figure yeah. out the angle, like on site yeah. that we call it the tight measurement, not the uh -huh. finished measurement. So tight meaning from floor to ceiling. And then we have to take the, the then we take the rod into account for the deduction. Yeah. 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 And who is the vendor for this rod? Um, this was a while ago. I want to say it was maybe Helser brothers. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then one last question, how did the workroom create those angled pleats for them to go straight and not go at an angle and then break at the buckram and to not have too much material at the top? Well, we told them about the fullness and we really, uh, it was like a collaborative effort in terms of like, we showed them the picture, showed them what we want. What, what you're not seeing here is that the angles panels are independent from the actual mm -hmm. drapery sure. panels mm -hmm. because there's no way that you can make a, a functional drape. There's, what there's no need to. Yeah. So what Billy does on site is that he tacked them together on site so that this way there wasn't any light gap. So it kind of looks mm -hmm. very seamless. And it was mm -hmm. just a matter of, um, you know, they're very good at, we're very particular on how we like our panels, especially on the angled cut. <laughs> so it was, it was, um, you know, a, definitely a conversation between Blanche and us on how, what the look was that she wanted to achieve. So she wanted them to be more on the straight side so that this way when they were closed, it kind of just all looked very seamless. It looks beautiful. Totally yeah. seamless. Totally that it looks up like an upscale hotel. Yeah. And that's exactly the look that the client was going for. And I, you know, perfect. Between everything else, we were just so happy that we were able to execute it for Blanche and her team. Nice. Okay. Done. All right. Quick commercial break we have for you here. I know we are, you know, a couple weeks away from Halloween and things are starting to get a little cold, but it's never too late to start thinking about um, if you want to shade your patio, especially if you're thinking that it's potentially a project that you want to do next year. Um, head on over to Windowworks because we have a free buying guide when it comes to um, awnings. It's five mistakes you wanted to avoid when buying a, a quality awning because it is an investment in your home. And so if we can help guide you in any way, uh, download your free copy today. Hmm. Cool. All right. So the next specialty rod that I want to talk about is a curved rod. So this particular one is a metal curved rod. The vendor, our preferred vendor for these has been United Supply and it's called United Supply curtain company or curtain rod company mm. or rod company or hardware company. <laughs> the United Supply it will, will get you there. They have several collections. This particular collection is called Select, Select Metals. 
And we have recently done a very interesting, very cool project where we had a big bow window. So essentially mm -hmm. where you use these is on the bow window. So if the uh, adjustable elbow bracket you can use on an angled window, the one that Kim just showed, or a regular bay window, if you have a big bow window, you want to curve your rod. Mm -hmm. So. Um, here is a, a stock picture of what they feature in their catalog. And this is how it came out in real life. So you can see this was a huge window. This is a home in Huntington Valley. And Huntington Valley is an area outside of Philadelphia. And this was for one of the um, owners of Omnia Architecture Group, mm. which is an architecture group with which we have done several projects. And this was for their personal home. So the during the pandemic, this room, which used to serve as a pool room or billiard room, but during the mm -hmm. pandemic, the owner of <laughs> Omnia Architects decided to use it as an office with the desk, of course, the computer facing that bow window. And so when mm -hmm. he is on the Zoom calls, it he was completely washed out and blown out and nobody could see anything. So they decided to put these beautiful curtains in the back so they can create the backdrop and a little bit of the drama. So this is what mm -hmm. it looks like. You can even see a little bit of that billiard table that's still set there in the room along with the desk that wasn't here for the picture time, but was there when uh, we uh, we're talking about it and uh, specifying the project. So the rod that we used, I'll go back to this picture, is a traverse rod, which means that it is a functional rod, which is what you see in the back, but it is covered with the metal decorative fascia. So instead of seeing just a basic commercial white rod that you get from um, usually a Kirsch catalog, so any kind of architrack or any kind of basic um, uh, traverse functional rod, in the last 10 years or so, to Kim's point, um, maybe even a little bit more for these tri for these um, uh, for, for these fascias, mm -hmm. they, our vendors have come up with a way to decorate the or make it a little bit prettier, a little bit more attractive by creating this fascia. This metal, fa the, the fascias come either in metal or in faux wood or wood, and they also come in a half round look which is what you're seeing here they also recently have started coming in a square and rectangular kind hmm. of look for more kind of modern contemporary application so when we did this project we actually had to create a template mm -hmm. so not only did we measure it really really well mm -hmm. but we had to create a whole template and send it to our vendor another thing that we had to do so if you are faced with a situation where you're measuring for a bow window or and a bow rod you need to take the measurement from the very left tip of the window to the very right tip of the window so have that straight measurement and then in the center of that straight measurement you need to do the depth so mm -hmm. from from this straight measure down to the to the bay of the window along with an actual template of the whole thing so these are the types of measurements you want to make sure that you take first you want to make sure that you have the project <laughs> that the customer agrees to the look the feel the budget and then when everything is approved and a go then you want to go ahead and take all of those measurements okay so i have also we've also just recently installed this same exact rod so uh, I have a couple of questions here. What is your bracket situation that's going on here? Because what I'm looking at here is, um, and it's hard to tell from the picture, what was your distance between the top of the window and that kind of soffit area? So was this, yeah. did you use the standard bracket with that, you know, two and a half inch black plate? Or did we do more of like a, was it like a ceiling mount mounted yeah. application? Mm -hmm. So... You can ceiling mount this rod because of the uh, the, the round fascia. fascia. The fascia comes up above the rod, the, the actual track, I should mm -hmm. say. So the bracket is not deep enough to go straight to the ceiling. Right. So we have to mount it. Um, we have to mount it to the wall. Okay. In this application, in this oops in this instance we we did mount it to the wall however we didn't use these decorative brackets that you're seeing okay. here with the round plate because that round plate would have created too much of a gap between the ceiling and the top of the rod because mm -hmm. the bracket 
um, the top of the round part of the bracket is like sits higher by like an inch or so ish like um, yeah. higher than, than the top of the rod and we wanted the rod to be as close to the ceiling as possible so there's another bracket that is just like your regular l bracket so it's mm -hmm. straight okay. with the same type of mechanism right here it's called a stirrup that goes inside the track and holds it in place okay okay and then did we do cord draw or baton draw for this one? This was cord draw. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think it was on the right or on the left. I don't remember, but yeah. you can do it on, on, on either way. Oh, and another thing in terms of shipping, this rod was spliced in the mm -hmm. center. So because otherwise it, it would have been <laughs> too big to ship, too big to transport. They would have had to create it and do all sorts of crazy things. So this was spliced, meaning that it's cut in the center and just kind of like put, put together like this. So it saved a lot on shipping and handling. Yeah. Before you could splice these, we had one that we had to have sent to us years, year. I mean, year, this was years ago. Um, it was one of Luann's projects mm -hmm. and it had to be created here. And when it got here, it looked like Noah's Ark, the way it was. <laughs> I re remember receiving the delivery and I was like, where am I putting this? Yeah, what's happening? Well, you know, it's so interesting when we're in people's homes and we see these huge windows, yeah. we don't really think much of it because it's usually part of a big room and a yeah. big house and everything's big and oversized, but it fits. It's all proportionate mm -hmm. to the house. And then yeah. you get it out of the context of the house. You get it in your office mm -hmm. or in your garage or, you know, <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, this is so big. How are we ever going to, like, what are we going to do with it? And is it ever going to fit? It looks so big. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know that when we did this rod this past um, spring, even the way that and we spliced ours and ours was about 12 feet. So it was about 144 inches around. Um, even the way that came shipped, it was really like in a funky box and everything else. And it was just we treated it like a child. We're like, nobody go near it. Don't breathe on it. Don't do like <laughs> we were just like kept it blocked off downstairs. Um because it was such a specialty thing that we had to wait a while for. So, um, yeah. so yeah, but this is nicely, nicely done. Things that we do. Vita. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So if you are new to window treatments and, uh, you're really getting started, whether it's a project for your home or you're an interior designer, that's just wanting to add window treatments to your, um, roster of what you offer and you don't know where to start, head on over to uh, windowworksnj.com. We have a free ebook that Luann wrote, Architectural Digest is Incoming, 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatments. It's really like a you know, window treatment 101 guide where she breaks down all the basics and um, it's free so you can get your free copy today. <laughs> okay, so this is another type of elbow that you can use um it's if you wanted to if you're ever dealing with a bay window situation and you ever wanted to wrap the outside wall of that bay we recently just did this for um designs by dama i don't have a picture of it yet because the project is still in process or in progress rather um but it was one of the first times that the client really didn't want the um the drape covering too much of the window mm -hmm. but she really wanted drapes so we're like all right we're gonna have to utilize the dead wall space that's on the outside of the bay window mm -hmm. so we used a um swivel bracket because again i was just a little too nervous mm -hmm. about um doing something the, so stationary as yeah that. I, because in case the angle was wrong and whatnot but you do have the flexibility if you don't want to see the actual because in the elbow there is you see the joint just in the like, changed like, elbow. So yeah, there's and, a difference, the, I guess, let's yeah. make, a, let's make yeah. a distinction. There is a stationary elbow, which is the hero shot that you see yeah. here. And there is a hinged or adjustable elbow, which are all the little guys that you're seeing in the middle. So what you're going to see there is you're basically going to see, like, if this is your elbow, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to see the joint. That's right. So see if, the hinge. if you don't want to see the hinge on that curved part and you want something that's a little bit more clean, then you can go for more of this kind of stationary elbow that wraps around um, the outer side. Um, it is really pretty when it's done, um, when it's done and installed really nicely. And this is for that type of application that if you wanted to have it, if you wanted the drapes to wrap the outer side of the window, this is when you would use this type of elbow. Mm -hmm. I guess you really have to make sure that 
um, that uh, the that outside angle is um, 90, 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. So and this is a project that we did for Anion Design. Uh, we did this. Um, oof. I want to say, I can tell you this was my first French return rod. Mm, so it was a while ago because I know you've used French returns for a very, very long time. So this was uh, um, Anion Designs. They're based out of um, San Francisco. And um, so they showed us a picture. Um, this is when I was still riding her along in the car with Luann, and they showed us a picture of this French return rod, and Luann's like, yeah, totally, and we get in the car, and she was like, do, do you uh, how know do I what do that, that is? And I'm like, no, I'm like, ah, but I can Google, and so I just looked up, you know, drapery rods that return back to the wall, and found a, a company in California, so not only did we do a French return rod, but then we also did one that had to you know follow the shape of this bay window so um this one just so that all of you guys are aware this was even before we had adjustable elbows so mm -hmm. we had to actually template this project ship the template over to the west coast wow and this got shipped to us spliced in the middle so like where you see the chandelier there oh, okay. so we had like these like like V type rods <laughs> that came in and got delivered. And it was one of those that during the whole process, I just kept going, please come and direct. Please, work, <laughs> please, 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 work, please work. work. Please work. Because <laughs> this is the first time we're doing this. It's returning back to the wall and trying to explain all this to Billy while we're on the measure, trying mm -hmm. to get the template. He's looking at me like, what? we're doing what and the rod does what and i'm like yeah yeah this is what it does and like the amount of phone calls it's gonna work it's gonna work and now when i look at something like this i'm like oh yeah easy throw a couple of elbows and it returns back to the wall no big deal but this was really one of the first times we did um a front return and a decorative metal rod that followed mm -hmm the curve of a bay that you just didn't butt them up like this because she was very insistent of like the it has to look seamless and we're like okay, okay. and that's when i got in the car and was you know feverishly right. googling <laughs> the amount of time that i have prayed to the window treatment gods that, like <laughs> I mean, I still do it to this day because, you know, you have imposter Definitely. syndrome oh, that you're God. just like, please, please you're like, watch over me. <laughs> you know, when your installers are on an install and you see their name come across your cell phone, you're like, oh, it's you're never for them to just say, hey, our day's going lovely. That's exactly so. <laughs> it. Well, it's funny that I just got a call from our installer who is in the middle of an install right now. So I just whispered to Beata to please call him. I hope everything's yeah. okay. That I see some, some running around over here. So. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's never like everything's great no yeah, problem like i just wanted to call to check in on your day what's up mm -hmm. <laughs> so um nope, never like know. that <laughs> but yeah, all right you guys another example so go a, ahead a really quick commercial break uh, vitalia inc which is my company we also have a free gift for you that we would love for you to take advantage of it is a, a curated lookbook filled with inspiration education and we call it 37 and a half window mm -hmm. treatment ideas for you to steal swipe and use immediately on your next design project. Um, lots of really great information there and you can get your copy for free at our website, which is vitaliainc.com. Okay. So, um, Actually, something that uh, we also wanted to show you guys, not necessarily yeah. a project that either Kim or I did, but is a really cool thing that um, we found by uh, a project done by Fiona Duke Interiors. And this is a rod done by the Bradley Collection. Mm -hmm. It is, and it is a double rod. You, so you can see here before the curtains were um, hung, you see the double bracket and you see how the whole rod, the way I see it is that it's done as a one continuous rod. So mm -hmm. I don't see an elbow bracket. I don't see a hinged bracket. Um, I believe that they truly 
uh, um, templated it and that's how the rods were made and to do it for a double rod which means that you have to take proper deductions Oof. so it's because you measure the wall you take the template yeah. of the wall but the rod comes forward of the wall by mm -hmm. three and a half inches for the first rod by probably six and a half to seven inches but for the second rod so to take that proper deduction takes a lot of skill and knowledge but what we want to show you here that it can be done yes and Bradley right. Collection is is a company that um, is very uh, famous, infamous for that. Yes, we've we've used them on um, like a lot of specialty. Um, they're they're out of their European company, mm -hmm. so that's right. yeah, that's right. They and here's their... a, uh -huh, here. Here, oops, I don't know why I just went black. Uh, but here, here is another uh, picture yeah. by by the Bradley Collection. Not something that Kim and I have done, yeah. but in the spirit of showing you the um, curve uh, specialty mm -hmm. rods and curved rods. Not only can you curve it inside the window, but you can curve it outside the window. So mm -hmm. if you have an older home where you have like this um, bump column. out column, right? And, uh, and you're trying to not cover the window, but still give the customer the drape look, you have the ability of curving it outside, just like what Kim mm -hmm. did with an elbow bracket on the, or what we saw with the elbow bracket mm -hmm. outside the bay window, you can do a whole curve thing. But again, the templating for that is uh, mind boggling. <laughs> Yeah, but it's I mean, possible. So it Kim is. and I are here to not only share our stories, but also to show you what's possible, whether we have done it or not. And this is that particular example. Let's just take a moment to like really appreciate those pleats. I know. I know. That's definitely something that this looks like it's out of London. This is not here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. But this is not, <laughs> this I mean, is not you can, something. You can yeah. even see in the molding. <laughs> yeah. This is, and I think they're based out of London, the UK, with the Bradley collection. They are. They yeah. Are. So, um, yeah, this is this is not one that you know. You're not yeah. finding this in Manhattan. And the, the company I want to give shout out to the company who who did this. This is called the Curtain Tailor, mm -hmm. um, the window treatment company or design company. I'm not sure, but we found this picture on Instagram, um, and uh, just couldn't help it but feature it and show you guys what's possible and give the shout out to the amazing craftsmanship of the Bradley collection and mm -hmm. the amazing templating job and the visionary job of the curtain tailor. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, everyone. Well, that concludes today's episode of specialty hardware, where we focused on elbows, curved rods, and uh, et cetera. Um, if you are in the New Jersey and New York area and you have a window that has a tricky situation where you're just not sure if a um, what type of drapery rod will work, um, head on over to uh, the Window Works Instagram uh, page uh, or email us, send us an email because we would be happy to help you on your next drapery hardware project. And if you are in the Philadelphia area, Vitalia Inc., our company, would love to support you if you are an interior designer looking to um, have the stress and the responsibility of window treatments unloaded onto a company who really knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We are a one-stop shop. We are your go-to resource, a white glove, concierge-level service exclusively for luxury interior designers ready to fly first class in the world of window treatments. So call us, email us, DM, PM, contact us with whatever project you have in the works. All right, everyone. Well, we hope you have a fantastic weekend and we will see you next Friday. Because if it's Friday, it is WTF. WTF live. <laughs> but no, no, silly, not that WTF. It is Window Treatment Friday live. And we'll love seeing you here every Friday. If you have any questions ahead of it or during it, by all means, feel free to ask us. We're here to help you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one. Have a good weekend.